So today we're going to look at the Bob Layton's Iron Man Artist Select Series Signed and Numbered Edition. Uh, they can't, IDW can't seem to make up their name on what the title of this is. You'll see it's phrased a little bit differently in the listing and on the book and in various places, but it's their Artist Select Series basically where they have an artist select which issues will be reprinted and in what order, and basically the artist just picks it all. Uh, it's some kind of deal that IDW has with Marvel. Uh, to me, it's kind of astonishing that Marvel lets another publisher collect their stuff this way. But, you know, I, it's great. Glad it happened, but it, it's, it's certainly odd to me. But anyway, so I've got the signed and numbered edition. I guess they all are. I don't know that you can get it any other way, but... It's uh, 394 pages. It's 125 is the price listed on IDW store site at this point. Uh, it says there's, at the time of shooting, it says there are 214 of these in stock. Uh, I have number 129 of, 990, of 999. So it is a very limited thing. If you want to get it, you probably should get it. Uh, IDW typically has some sales around Christmas time where these are steeply discounted. It seems like I might have got this for 75 bucks, something like that. Not sure. Uh, they have a few more. There's a Hulk one uh, that looks really good. Uh, there's a John Byrne Fantastic Four one. I did pick that one up. I got that one from Cheap Graphic Novels. But um, right now, at the time of shooting this, the only place that seems to have this one in stock is the actual IDW store site, and I'll link that down below if you want to check that out. I'll run some pictures here showing the size compared to uh, a DC Absolute. Yeah, this thing is bigger than a DC Absolute, and it's also a little bit bigger than a Marvel Gallery Edition. But I'll show it here with next to some other books. So you can check that out. The, the build quality is very good. The binding is strong. Uh, the covers and the slip case are in this fabric material. I don't know if you can tell from the pictures and the video. Uh, I'll roll some... I'll put some B-roll in here showing how the book lays open. You, you do have to struggle a little bit at the beginning and toward the end to get it to lay open and actually let you read it. So, you know, that, that's a little bit of a bummer, but but it's basically a, a really good quality book. Uh, the pages are very thick, super high quality pages. I, I would say the page quality on this is even better than the original generation of Marvel omnibuses, which was pretty dang good. Uh, this is even better. It's got like, a, it's really bright white with a with a matte finish, but it looks good. It uh, And it has a ribbon. You know, I, I love a ribbon almost as much as Krista does, but ribbons are nice. And it's all done up in this bright red color. You can see here it, it's fitting for, for Iron Man. But that's a coincidence because all of the Artist Select series seems to have this red color theme. I should point out uh, one thing they really got right that I don't think I've ever seen done on any other uh, uh, any other volumes is they have inserted this spacing uh, in between the pages. You, you can see on the B-roll here uh, that completely eliminates the possibility of gutter loss. You know, when that's the deal. You know, when you're reading a book and the art uh, and or the text is sucked up in the middle where the pages meet and because the book won't lie flat enough for, for you to see it like in a real comic book with staples that lays completely flat. Well, here, they just fixed it. You know, they've just inserted some spacing there. It just completely eliminates the problem. Now, <sighs> you know, uh, Marvel, take a look at this. They figured out the solution to this age-old problem. You know, just do it, please. This is what we need right here. The writer on all the issues collected here is David Michelini, and Bob Layton is, is the co-plotter for, every, for everything here. Uh, most of the pencils are by John Romita Jr. They, we also have some work by Jackson Geis, Mark D. Bright, Jerry Bingham, and some killer stuff by Barry Smith. And it's really interesting to see Barry Smith inked by Bob Layton. And actually, uh, to me, it doesn't look all that different than uh, Barry Smith inking Barry Smith, like on the Weapon X stuff. 
and I mean it's a little bit cleaner, not quite as scratchy as Barry Smith inking his own stuff, but it, it's remarkably similar. I guess that probably means that Barry Smith's pencils are pretty heavy to begin with, so not a lot of inking is required, uh, I would imagine. I'd have to see some naked Barry Smith pencils, but that's, that's the impression I have from looking at this. Because uh, if I didn't know it was Bob Layton inking Barry Smith from the credits, I'm not sure I could guess it. And usually I can pick out an inker just by look. If it's, a, if it's an inker I'm really familiar with, I can be like, okay, that's that. I mean, if you gave me a blind test, or not a blind test, but a, if you showed me a bunch of work from the different people I'm familiar with, I could probably pick them out one from another, just the inking even. You know. But uh, yeah, Bob, Le Bob Layton inked everything in here, and he did the pencils on two issues which is really nice to see when he does both. But if you want a little more info on David Michelinie and John Romita Jr., I'll link my review of the Iron Man omnibus they did. Uh, I'll attach it up here somewhere or over there. I'm not sure where it'll be up in the corner. Figure out how to do that. I haven't done that one yet. But, but yeah, uh, it, it's sort of a, in my mind, this is kind of a sequel to that omnibus, even though it double dips and includes a large chunk of that omnibus. So this collects Iron Man issues 124 through 127, 131 through 133, 144, 149, 150, 228, 231, 234, 249, and 250. Now, it skips around like that because this is the Artist Select Edition, and Bob Layton was able to choose whatever issues he wanted to to showcase his art. So that's really what this is. This is an art showcase selected by the artist. So... It's pretty cool. Uh, it also has a big five-page interview that uh, IDW editor Chris Ryall did with Bob Layton in 2018 for this collection. And I learned a lot of stuff in there that I never knew uh, before I, I read that interview. Uh, I'll give you a few highlights, but I don't want to give it all away. It's, uh, it, there's a lot of material there. It's fascinating. It's right at the beginning of the book. But uh, I'll, I'll give you a few highlights. So teenage Bob Layton hated the Iron Man title. So he didn't even like it. Uh, the things he had problems with, he thought the villains were silly. Uh, he didn't like Tony always having a heart problem. He talked about how it seemed like every other issue, you know, Tony Stark was, oh, oh, having a heart attack, and he's on the floor writhing in pain, gripping his heart. It, it seemed weird to him that someone as genius level as Tony Stark couldn't figure out a solution to that, you know, before he did. But... Mainly, I think the problem he had was he didn't like, like Larry Lieber, you know, Larry Stanley's brother. And um, and it's true. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Larry Lieber's stuff either. And he actually wrote all of the original. The first bit of Iron Man was written by Larry Lieber, not Stan Lee. A lot of people say, well, Stan Lee wrote it. Yeah. No, he, um, he, he did write a lot of Iron Man within the pages of Avengers. And Bob Layton was like, why is... Iron Man's so much cooler in the Avengers than he is in his own title. And he surmised it was Larry Lieber's fault. You know, So that was kind of fun, uh, seeing that behind the scenes there. Also, he didn't like that the armor didn't look like metal to him. It didn't have that shine. And you know you know what I, you know, I said in the other thing, uh, Bob Layton is known for his shiny. You know? And so when he got a hold of this title, he made it shine, and it looked like steel, looked like metal. Him and David Michelini interviewed as a package deal. So I didn't know that either. So they came to Marvel as a team, you know, and they were like, let us have this book together. So it wasn't just a coincidental or an incidental thing, which is usually what happens when an artist is a co-plotter along with a writer being the scripter. In this case, they were they planned this from the beginning. You know, when they got the title, they were like, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to plot this together. And, you know, and so they would plot things out far in advance. I mean, like the whole alcoholism thing was plotted out, you know, a way ahead of time. So that's pretty cool. And another thing I found out in the little interview was uh, Justin Hammer, the villain, the famous, you know, uh, rogues gallery of Iron Man villain on Justin Hammer. Uh, not only was he modeled after Peter Cushing, but his name is from Peter Cushing also because Peter Cushing was known for his Hammer horror films, you know, the, the British uh, film studio that released all those awesome horror movies in the, uh, I guess it would be the late 60s, early 70s. 
So that's why his name is, that's why his last name is Hammer. So, you know, to me, this is another nine star book. Um, I don't give it 10 because there are a few little odd choices they made. And, you know, like you see in the B roll, um, the book doesn't really like to help and participate with you when you're trying to read the beginning and the end. So that, you know, that, that's a little bit of a problem I think they could maybe fix, especially for the, the price they're, they're charging for this. You know, I mean, you're getting a lot, but they're getting a lot too. So, you know, uh, that, that holds it back just a little bit for me. Um, the, and, they, you know, there's a couple little weird gaffes, uh, one I'll point out on page 250. I'll, I'll try to get a scan of it up. Uh, the cover to issue 231, the credit, which I got to say, it's really nice how at the bottom of each page, there's a nice little uh, uh, bit of text that tells what issue it's from and, you know, what story you're on. And it is all page numbered out, which is nice because a lot of omnibuses and collected editions don't even have page numbers. And I just hate that. I mean, I, I know... A lot of younger people are used to that, that none of their books have page numbers, none of the collected comics do. But, uh, man, I, I really hate that because that's one way that that people can discuss books. You know, you could say, oh, my God, did you see what happened on page 54, you know, that third panel? Well, now you have no point of reference. You just have to kind of grope about with this book with no page numbers. But anyway, that, that's a rant for another time. But anyway, on page 250 of this book, uh, there's the cover for Iron Man 231, and the credit at the bottom that IDW put together says, art by question mark, question mark, question mark, and then it says, inks by Bob Layton. Okay, but one, you got Bob Layton right there. He couldn't tell you who, and even if you didn't want to do that, I can clearly see <laughs> the signatures of the artists are on that cover. It's, it clearly says Geis slash Layton. So that's Jackson Geis, a.k.a. Butch Geis. I guess they should have asked me, and I would have told them, and they could have put that. I mean, that's crazy. Anyway, I thought that was kind of weird. Um, but, but this book is clearly for the hardcore comic art fan. You know, you, if, if you're a fan of Bob Layton art and Iron Man, both preferably, um, you're going to want this book. You're going to want it on your shelf, but you better make sure you got a big shelf. <laughs> because this thing is massive, but uh, I, I I love it. I like it a lot, I, especially for the discounted price I got it at. But but even at one twenty five, it's probably not too much for this. It is a signed and numbered edition, and there's only got there's only nine hundred ninety nine of these in existence. So, you know, and I guess there's only I guess they I think they said they only had two fourteen in stock uh, at the IDW store. Oh, one other weird thing is on the IDW store. Uh, they list this book as having 400 pages. Well, there's not 400 pages here. There's 394. So the numbering ends at like 389. And then I counted the last pages, both sides, the end pages and all that. And I counted the first several end pages or end pages at the beginning of the book before the numbering started. I added all those in and I come up with 394. Now, you know, you could say I'm picking nits here, but this is an expensive book, and they made it, so why do they not know how many pages it is? I mean, even if you're counting the covers, you're still short of 400 pages, you know, so it's like someone's, ah, oh, it's about 400 pages. About? You know, that you, you printed the book, you published it, you don't know how many pages it is? But... <laughs> But anyway, at the same at the same listing on the IDW page as of right now, if you go look, or at least when I shot this, uh, it also says that the book was on sale on one one nineteen oh one. Nineteen oh one. So I don't know. Maybe they need to get a better handle on their website. <laughs> that could be the issue here. But anyway, uh, if you love Bob Layton art, probably should pick it up. Anyway, I'll be back next Monday on uh, April 25th with Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, this is the reprint edition. It's the one I got. Uh, so if, if you like this material, if you like watching me and hearing me ramble on about these comic books I love so much, uh, you know, uh, probably should subscribe. Give me a like. 
that all helps the channels. I mean, you, you've heard the drill before from other YouTubers. I'm not going to hammer it, but if you like my stuff, please subscribe. I appreciate it. And come back next Monday or before that.